Sunday presents the National Football League. This afternoon from Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California, it's the Arizona Cardinals and the Los Angeles Rams. Welcome to the Big A, 87 degrees down the street from Disneyland, opening day of the 1994 NFL season as the Rams host the Cardinals. Good afternoon, everybody. Kenny Albert along with former Buffalo Bill and Green Bay Packer Ron Pitts. And, Ron, Buddy Ball is finally upon us. After months of anticipation, Buddy Ryan, new head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, season ticket sales have doubled, and the expectations are high. He's injected so much energy and enthusiasm in Phoenix. People just want to see football. He got off the plane. The first thing he said was, you got a winner here. You got a winner in the owner. You got a winner in the people, and you got a winner in the players. So everybody's ready for Buddy Ball. I know I am. Well, Buddy Ryan has been a winner everywhere he has gone. Three Super Bowls as an assistant coach, and the main reason why, the 46 defense. You know, he's got some guys here that have played that defense for him, too. Seth Joyner's here. Clyde Simmons is here. Wilbur Marshall's here. They know what to do in this defense. This thing is very, very pressure-oriented. It puts a lot of pressure on people everywhere. And the Rams are going to see some of that pressure today. Well, the Cardinals defense up against the Rams offense with something old and something new. The old is second-year running back Jerome Bettis, over 1,400 yards as a rookie out of Notre Dame. And the new is the quarterback, Chris Miller, the former Atlanta Falcons. Jerome's a bread-and-butter guy for him. You know, second only to Emmitt Smith as far as rushing in the NFL is concerned. But the real pressure is going to be on Chris Miller today. He's got to find where the people are on that front line, locate the blitz, He's got to keep his head, and he's got to stay in the pocket and make all the right decisions. Let's see if he can do it. It's going to be a lot of pressure on him, but I think he can do it. The Rams like him a lot. The Rams have won the toss, and they will receive Greg Davis. Will kick off from the 30 for the Arizona Cardinals. One of the rule changes in the NFL. Davis kicking off from the 30, not the 35. Back deep for the Rams. Johnny Bailey, the former Cardinal. Bailey, number 21, David Lang, number 38. And we are underway from Anaheim Coliseum. The kickoff comes to Lang at the eight. David Lang taken down at the 30-yard line. So the Rams will start out in excellent field position. The kickoff moved back five yards, and the Rams will take over first and 10 from their own 30. They are led out by Chris Miller. Pro Bowler back in 1991. Injured over the last two years. He started only 11 games the past two years. Starting lineups brought to you by Zima. Jones, Lonaker, Brostek leading the offensive line. Bettis, Lester, the running backs, Hester and Anderson. And Troy Drayton is the tight end. On first down, this is Bettis. He fumbles on the first play, and it's recovered by the Cardinals. Number 21, James Williams, recovers the fumble. Jerome Bettis fumbled only twice all of last season in 294 carries. I mean, Jerome has been the workhorse for him. That's the guy they got to get the ball to, get it to early. But you can't ever count on things like that. He's a sure guy. He's not going to fumble very often, especially on an inside running play like that. That is just not Jerome Bettis. But that's just goes to show you how this, this game is, Kenny. Anything can happen. Now they put themselves in a little bit of a hole. Give them the Cardinals very good field position. He's going to take a handoff up the middle. And Wilbur Marshall's going to get a hand on it right. And that's questionable whether or not he came out before he was down. On first down, Burline's pass incomplete. Intended for number 81, Randall Hill. Well, all the talk, Ron, about the Cardinals' defense during the offseason and training camp, and on the first play from scrimmage of the 1994 season, they force a fumble. Yeah, now, watch Chris Miller there. He checked off. He stood at the line. He thought a blitz was coming. He spent a lot of time up there. But those are just things that happen in the game. Now the defense has got to step it up. they got to turn it up a notch like they talked about last night. Second down and 10 from the 37 of the Rams. Moore and Centers in the backfield behind Burline. Larry Centers eludes the first hit, but he is taken down about four yards behind the line of scrimmage by Roman Pfeiffer. Steve Burline in his sixth season out of Notre Dame, a native of Anaheim. He has 300 friends and family in attendance here today. The Cardinals line, Sharp, Dye, Tucker, and the two Cunninghams, Ed and Rick. Ronald Moore, over 1,000 yards as a rookie, joined by Larry Centers, Ricky Pearl, Randall Hill, and the tight end, Derek Ware. 
third down and 14. Erlein out of the shotgun. The pass is complete to Ware, and he is gang tackled by a trio of Rams led by the eighth-year man out of UNLV, Wymod Henderson. Good play by Henderson that time. He's just sitting inside in the what they call their dime package, third and very long. That time he was spying on centers. He's not going to move unless he moves. So the Cardinals forced to punt. Jeff Beagles, who was with Buddy Ryan in Philadelphia, the single safety is Johnny Bailey, waiting at his own 10. Beagles angles this one. And it is down deep in Phoenix Cardinals territory. 32-yard punt by Jeff Beagles. So the Rams will come out once again. Jerome Bettis fumbled on the first play from scrimmage. Chris Miller leading the Rams back out. The other side is a free agent. Buddy Ryan was actually interested in bringing Miller to Phoenix as Steve Berline's backup. Yeah, yeah, he talked a lot about him. He likes the way Miller sits in the pocket and he looks over everything. He's got really good vision. I didn't like to play against Miller when I was in the lead because he can take you apart. He's a smart guy and he looks over the whole defense all the time. First down from the seven. The handoff goes to Bettis. The Cardinals defense led by the front four. Simmons, the former Eagle, Bankston, Swan, and Chadrick Brown. Terrific linebacking core. Marshall, Hill, and Joyner. Marshall and Joyner have played for Buddy Ryan before. James and Aeneas Williams, the quarterbacks, Terry Hogue and Lorenzo Lynch. A lot of intensity on that unit there. Can they adapt to some of the multiple formations the Rams are getting like they're showing right here? <laughs> Second down and nine. <laughs> Miller's pass in out of the hands, and let's see, is it intercepted? The official ruling is the ball hit the ground, no interception. Now the officials talking it over, a trio of Cardinals say yes, in fact, it is an interception. Now you can, it's hard to see from our angle up here, but it looked like an interception to me. J.D. Williams coming over, gets one hand on it, and then he pins it to his shoulder, and he still has it. And it was ruled an incomplete pass. Wow, I don't know. James Williams is going to get his right hand on the ball, but as he hits the ground, watch the way he pins the ball to his helmet. Now, I want to know, that ball never hits the ground. His hand is between the ball and the ground. That is an interception. Williams had recovered the Bettis fumble just moments ago. Miller to pass on third down. And it's incomplete, intended for Flipper Anderson. So three plays and out, and the Rams will be forced to punt from their own end zone. You're going to get a chance to see Patrick Robinson right now, the Cardinal return man, really high on Buddy's list, like we talked about Kenny all this week when we had a meeting with Buddy. This is a guy they let go in Houston, and he's really upset about it, and he's so happy to have him back here. Sean Landetta, seven yards deep in his own end zone. Landetta gets away a good one. Robinson all the way back at the 37. Across midfield. Robinson finally taken down by David Lang. 55-yard punt by Landetta. 17-yard return by Patrick Robinson. The buddy there talking to Clyde Simmons, he's gotten all the guys that he's been around before and have been successful for him. Just look at this list. I mean, is this an all-star team or what? That is what you call talent. Defenses and defensive schemes win games, yeah, but if you don't have the talent, it just doesn't mix right. First down and 10 from the Rams, 46. Ronald Moore. It's about three yards. Sean Gilbert 
the first ram in there and a flag on the play our referee is Bernie Kukar offside on the defense number 90 five yard penalty repeat the down so Fred Young, or, or uh, Robert Young, limping off the game there for the Rams. Fred Stokes came in to replace him. This front four for the Rams has been banged up a lot. Sean Gilbert there, number 90, he has an ankle problem that he got three weeks ago in the uh, preseason game against the Raiders. Jimmy Jones from Dallas, free agent from Dallas, he has a wrist problem. Now Young is out. When we went with Gilbert on Friday, he said he was not yet 100%, but he would be by Sunday. First down and five, following the penalty. Burline's pass is dropped. Derek Ware, the tight end. It is ruled an incomplete pass. The Cardinals looking to use the tight end more this year, where only three receptions in 93, and it will be second and five. Where the tight end, he's just going to work on Roman Pfeiffer. That's not a, a real good matchup for the offense because Pfeiffer can run. This is what you call time in your hit. But the ball isn't thrown behind him and thrown out toward the sidelines. He can catch it and still keep running, but because he's got to turn around, it makes it difficult. Cardinals with two back points again. The handoff goes to Ronald Moore. On second and five, Moore looks to be a yard short of the first down. We welcome those of you who have been watching the New York Giants 28-23 victory over the Philadelphia Eagles. Holding number 64 on the offense, 10-yard penalty for repeat second down. As we take a look at Buddy Ryan, this is Kenny Albert along with Ron Pitts from Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California. Jerome Bettis of the Rams fumbled on the Rams' first play from scrimmage, but both teams forced to punt. It is now Cardinals ball second and 15 on their own 49. Burline going far sideline, Gary Clark out of bounds inside the 40. Gain of 12 yards and he was pushed out by the right cornerback, Steve Israel. What a talent there in Gary Clark, 10th year out of James Madison University. You know, here's a guy that 50 receptions, averaged 50 receptions over a nine year period every year. That's hard to do. If you can get to that 60 level each year, you've had a great year. This guy's done it nine years in a row. And he is 11th on the all time list. First reception this season. Burline out of the shotgun on third and four. Now he goes the other way, intended for Ricky Kroll. Broken up by Robert Bailey, number 28. Cardinals is trying to spread out the Rams right now, hoping to get a bad matchup. We talked to Steve last night, and he really wasn't too impressed with the secondary play of the Rams. Thought that they'd been generous, and perhaps they could get a lot of things on them early. Jeff Beagles out to punt for the second time. Johnny Bailey. And once again, the Cardinals down a Beagles punt inside the 10 yard line. Kenny Albert Ron Pitts back in Anaheim as Chris Miller brings the Rams to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 on their own nine. Flipper Anderson in motion. Jerome Bettis. Bettis gains about three yards. See, what you're seeing here is the Rams have been pretty basic in their formations. That time they come out in a two tight end set. So the two tight end set is telling everybody we plan to run the football. And that man right there, he's run the football quite a bit throughout his coaching career. He knows how to get the thing done, all the way from Lawrence McCutcheon to Kurt Warner. He knows how to run with the football. From ground Chuck to ground Jerome. <laughs> Jerome Bettis, tremendous rookie season, NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. Here's 
Bennis on the pitch back. And he has hit behind the line of scrimmage. Terry Irving, rookie out of McNeese State. Now the guy that made that play, though, was 55 Wilbur Marshall. He came in on the force. Wilbur will be on the left side of your screen. He's going to come in and just take the feet out from under Lester, 34, the fullback, right there. And now watch what that does to Jerome Bettis' feet. He has to stop his feet and look for a hold. And now this is the pursuit and the talent we talked about from this Cardinal defense. Eight men flying around getting to the football. So Jerome Bettis off to a bit of a slow start. Third down and 12. Miller from the end zone. Going deep, and it's... Uh, Intended for Flipper Anderson, the pass about five yards too far. So once again, the Rams will be forced to punt the football. In Buddy's 46 scheme, there's eight men on the line. The problem that this creates for the offense is you got to keep people in to protect the quarterback. The Rams only had two people out in the pass that time. Now they're going to roll him out. That's going to give him more time. But you can see he's only got two people deep. He really said he's got to hold the football. He doesn't have anybody to throw to. John Landetta run once again, punching from the end zone. Nice spiral. Robinson all the way back at his own 38. Robinson to the Rams, 40. Patrick Robinson with a 17-yard return following the 56-yard punt by Sean Landetta. Tonight, Fox presents the biggest event of the season, Fox's Super Sunday. Terry Bradshaw and Howie Long host a night of new shows and special surprise guests, including the season premieres of The Simpsons and Married with Children. Fox Super Sunday kicks off tonight at 7 o'clock Pacific time. First and 10 from the Rams 40. Furline on first down. He finds Gary Clark once again, has the first down across the LA 30. See, because the Rams don't have a healthy front four right now, they can't get into their game and get any pressure on the quarterback. And there is the Rams' defensive line, Stokes, for the injured Robinson, Gilbert, Jones, and Young. The linebackers, Pfeiffer, Conlon, and Rowling. The secondary, Israel, Newman, Pope, and Light. The completion to Clark, the first first down of the ball game. Some confusion right now. Berline's got to call a timeout. Ricky Pro wasn't sure whether he's in the game or not in the game. And this is something that, for Buddy Ryan, he really harped on when he came into camp. Buddy's Cardinals and Chuck Knox's Rams remain scoreless. First down of the 29, following the Cardinals' timeout. Ronald Moore across the 25. Five-yard gain for Ronald Moore, who scored four touchdowns last year in the Cardinals game against the Rams, rushed for over 1,000 yards as a rookie. Yeah, first 1,000-yard rusher since Stump Mitchell. you got to believe you're going to see this guy a lot more. Only four other backs in the history have ever done that in their rookie year. Emmett Smith, Jim Brown, Big Earl Campbell, and Gail Sayers. Second and five after the five-yard pickup by Moore. Centers. Larry Centers boots the ball. Here's Todd White. White could go all the way. He's to the 40. Across the 20. Touchdown Rams. <laughs> 74 yards. Larry Centers fumble. Todd White. The first round draft pick in 1991 out of Notre Dame has given the Rams a 6-0 lead. Watch number 52, Joe Kelly. He's the outside linebacker. He'll beat to the right of your screen. He's going to come up and get his right hand on, on Larry Center's arm, and, and Todd Light's just in a good position to pick up the ball. That's what you call cherry-picking right there.
Luis Zendejas with Chris Chandler holding. Joe Kelly, the outside linebacker for the Rams, he's going to come out of the right of your screen, and I want you to watch what he does with his left hand. We can stop it right here. He's got all hand on all of that ball, and he's going to rip down on it. And Todd Light coming up for safety support, I mean, that, or corner support, that's just called being in the right place at the right time. Or the light place at the right time. Light place at the right time. <laughs> Don Light's first career touchdown. This is Patrick Robinson. Robinson to the 35. Finally taken down after a 30-yard kickoff return. So it has been a busy afternoon so far for Patrick Robinson as we take another look at Todd Light. With all the talk about the Cardinals' defense, it's the Rams' defense coming up with the first touchdown of the ball game. And it's turnovers that are it's hurting both of these two teams right now. In the preseason, the Rams turned the ball over ten times. Way too much for Chuck Knox. And the Cardinals, they turned one over here just today early. And that's the thing that'll kill you faster than anything. Cardinals first and ten from their own 36. Moore and centers for running backs. Many flags on the play. Chuck Knox was not happy during the last two Rams preseason games. They committed 10 penalties in each game, but this time it's on the Cardinals. Ball this starts. Number 71 on the offense. Prize is a snap. Five yard penalty. Still first down. You know, when it came into camp, Buddy was really excited about the fact that the offensive line was starting to gel and come together, even though he did criticize them early. Ball start right there on 71. Tucker just comes out a little early trying to get a little leverage. Mark Tucker playing his first National Football League game in his second year out of USC. Originally drafted back in 1991, but this is his debut. Play action pass. And Berline, Tucker may have stepped on his foot, flags on the play. And Berline was taken down by number 76, Robert Young. And they're going to get Jimmy Jones for grabbing the face mask. He got the top of Burline's helmet on a quick sweep with his left hand. But that's considered part of the face mask, and they're going to call that. It's surprising Jimmy can grab anybody with the condition of his wrist. We talked to him the other day. He kind of shunned it off a little bit, but that's that. That's psychology when you're getting ready to go into a football game. You don't want to talk about it. So, and five yard face mask penalty and number 98 on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. <laughs> Jimmy not agreeing with the call there, but you know, not the, bla the, the flagrant variety, the unintentional variety. That's why it's only five yards. Must be very strange for uh, Jimmy Jones to look over at the sidelines and not see our Fox colleague, Jimmy Johnson. Jones spent four years at the University of Miami with Jimmy and then four years in Dallas. Burr line on first down. It's incomplete. Intended for Randall Hill. Hill double teamed on the play. Randall Hill started the ball game, but here in the first quarter, Gary Clark off to the good start with two receptions. See, the Rams are trying to put Burline into a position now where he's got to throw through zones and over passing lanes. And that time, he was just throwing in between people, trying to fit it into a window, and it wasn't going to work. Second down and 12. the former San Diego Charger. 
Yeah, the value of having a Marquez Pope on your team is that Marquez is actually a corner playing back there in the safety position, and that's what everybody's going to these days. You gotta have speed back there. Because of the new Chuck rule, the corners are having a hard time hitting people, and you gotta be able to bring somebody up that can cover man-to-man -man on a tight end or a running back instead of you know changing around your whole defense. That time he showed his speed getting on the perimeter and making a stop on Ronald Moore. Three wide receiver set for the Arizona Cardinals on third and 11. Full line out of the pocket. Flag in the secondary. The pass went incomplete. Flag thrown around the 50-yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 34. Can you remember Anthony Newman was telling us the other day how the Chuck Illegal rule has contact, really made it. Number 28 on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty plus a first down. How the Chuck rule has made it hard for corners to cover anything, and they're looking for it all the time. Bailey got a hand on him late. See, this is light, and I don't think this is where the play occurred. It occurred in the back behind here. penalty of this first quarter. First down from the 39. Larry Centers, who fumbled on his last carry. Joe Kelly and Henry Rowling in on the stop. Kelly coming in from the Raiders as a linebacker. They needed to beef up their linebacking core. They weren't really happy with what they had. They got a lot of speed in Roman Pfeiffer, and, and Conlon plugs up the middle real well. But today, if you look, you'll see that they're playing a, a, a 34 sometimes, and that's going to give them extra speed at the outside linebacker position. Second down and nine. Verlon's pass knocked away by Shane Conlon, and another flag in the defensive secondary. That's penalty number four on the Rams. Uh, we spoke earlier about Chuck Knox holding number 56 on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty, first down. So the penalty was on Conlon, who broke up the play. Chuck Knox said the Rams committed ridiculous mistakes over the last two preseason games, 10 penalties in each. He hired a veteran NFL official to come in and work at the Rams' practices and actually call penalties during practice. Shane Collins, number 56, he's a middle linebacker. He's going to come down and go man to man on where. Right there, as where comes underneath, he gets just a little bit of jersey, and the only guy that could see that is that official back there. That is a good call. Berline on first down, fakes the pass, chased out of the pocket. And they rule it a sack. Robert Young and Fred Stokes combine to take down Burline. It looked as if he may have scrambled away, but the Burline went to the ground, and he is sacked for a 12-yard loss. you got to give credit to the secondary here. Burline comes with the pump fake. He wants to do the out and up on the left side, but now the, the, the defensive line just closes in on him, and his knee's down there. That's just good penetration. A good job, I think, by the Rams' defensive coaches of making the switch to the 3-4. They realize they're hurt up front. So they're going to bring in an extra back, a little bit more speed. And I think it's given the, the Cardinals offensive line a little trouble right now. Following the sack, second down and 22. Burline to Randall Hill, forced out at the 40. After a seven-yard gain from Burline to Randall Thrill Hill, the former number one draft pick of the Dolphins. Yeah, respecting the speed there of Randall because he runs about a 4-3. You know you got a long down and distance. Don't take any chances. This is the guy they'd use as a deep threat. You think Gary Clark is, but it's really not. It's Randall Hill. He hasn't caught a lot of balls as much as they would like him to catch in, in the past few years. So I think it's, it's Burline hinted to us last night. They're going to try to get him downfield. Third 
down at 15 from the shotgun once again. Gary Clark, he has the first down. Well, maybe not, about a half yard short. It looked like Clark had it and then cut back. Clark also thought he had the first down and is very upset. Gary's not a real vocal guy a lot out there, but I think he really believes he had that first down. You can see him getting a little hot. He's going to run a deep, deep comeback and drives the corner off. Now look at the move there, and he thinks that he, he got the ball. The ball actually it hits before the marker, so it was a good call. Good, good, good. Fourth and short, full on on the sneak. We will have to see where the officials mark the ball. Cardinals should be very good at third and short situations, fourth and short situations. When I went to training camp in the offseason here, I mean, they came out, and, they, and, and, and at the end of every practice, they did five plays live of one-on-one -on -one goal line, just getting into people, moving people. That kind of shows you where Buddy, where his head is on this kind of thing. Well, that work paid off. Yeah, you know, he, he, believe, exactly, he believes in that tough guy mentality. Uh, he doesn't want to be out muscled when it's when it's fourth and short third and short that kind of deal so i wasn't surprised that the cardinals won that one but he held his quote voluntary three week free camp camp voluntary voluntary right. in the sense that if you did not show up you were basically volunteering to get cut <laughs> vermont complete the tight end Derek ware up to the 35. that's it right there it's not surprising to me that Ware catches so well. He's a guy that was drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays back in 85. Played in the minor league for him in 85 to 87. And he's such a big target. He was a center fielder when he played baseball. You like those big targets. And they talked last week about getting the tight end more involved in the game this year. Well, three receptions all of last year, too, so far today. 11th play of the drive on second and one. Larry Centers. Looks like he has the first down. Some words exchanged on the sidelines. Marquez Pope. Boy, that's great to have those mics down here because that is what it's like when you're on the field. You can hear it all, and some of it's not good, but it's that's the way it is, and that's real-life football. James Williams. <laughs> That's your job if you're not on the field, by the way. <laughs> Wilbur knows that. You got to talk a little trash. Timeout, Los Angeles. That's their first charge team timeout. The 42nd timeout. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday coverage begins with the pregame show featuring Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, Jimmy Johnson, and James Brown at 9 a.m. Pacific. The action continues as Joe Montana goes up against his old teammates, the 49ers, for the first time. It's the San Francisco 49ers battling the Kansas City Chiefs. Check local listings for the game and time in your area right here on Fox Sports. Well, the Cardinals called timeout earlier. Now a Los Angeles Rams timeout called by the defense, which gives Steve Furline a chance to uh, enter the sidelines and chat with offensive coordinator Dave Atkins. See, Berline, we talked about the amount of tickets he had to buy for this game, over 300 tickets. And you see this left end zone here. I think that's all his people down there. Many wearing shirts, <laughs> which say Berline backer. Of course, he's from the area, Servi High School here. Let's see if this gentleman turns around. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Berline backer on cue. I think he's getting hungry. Maybe Steve arranged for a buffet out back. I think he did. First and 10 from the 34. Five, five, Ronald Moore stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Rams defense very aggressive here in this first quarter. Maybe they ought to play nicked up more often. Gilbert and Jones, they're just pushing down that line. They're trying to run a cutback play that time. 
to start to one side and then break it back to the other side, but it was just so bunched up. There was no place to go. They've done a great job of stuffing this run. I think the, the, the challenge now is to control the pass and keep Burline in that pocket. Second down and nine with the Cardinals trailing 7-0. For Ricky Prohl, he was double teamed, and it will be third down and nine. Now, if they wanted to call something that time, they could call Bailey for pushing on Prohl. He had his hand on his back, and he rode him all the way down the field. I kind of wonder maybe now if they're not starting to just lay off because they have been awful aggressive as to what they're calling on the corners. And do they have a lot of confidence in Ricky Prohl or what? They say he can get open anytime, anywhere, and, and I believe he can. Well, Before when I played against him. Berlin says the combination of Clark, Cole, and Hill, he feels the best trio in the league. Yes, Berlin on third down, knocked away by the safety Keith Lyle, the rookie out of the University of Virginia, playing his first NFL game. And if the name Lyle rings the bell, his father, Gary Lyle, played for Chicago 68 through 74. Once again, they're trying to get the in. Watch the break. 35, Lyle gets on the ball. And look at his right hand. His left hand comes underneath. Everybody's aware of the football today, if you've noticed, Kenny. That's one of the things they practice is slapping the football out. Everybody's football turnover conscious. Jeff Beagle's punching for the third time. kick comes down at the 15 the Cardinals field that the ball deflected off a member of the Rams they say they have it and they do in situations like this when a ball is in the air and you're not sure where it is, they have a call to get everybody away from the football. And I'm not sure that Johnny Bailey knew or heard the call. You're going to see there's a fight now to get people away from the football. At the last minute there, he runs into his own man. Now he tries to recover and make the catch. The question is, did the ball did touch the ball Bailey? Hit it, it, it looked as if it hit Bailey's chest on the way down. It looked like it just missed his foot, then hit his chest on the way up. But see, the, the problem there, Bailey's got to understand, if he has trouble lining up under a punt, then you got to get away from him. See, he's recovering from running into his own man. Now he's trying to catch the ball. It looks like it hit the inside of his foot and rolled up. But I don't think that's what we're going to yeah. call it. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. That's a 15-yard penalty from the spot. First down. But now the question is, was his own man blocked into him? Because that's where the contact initiated that caused him to lose his position under the punt. Well, see, he'll step up. That's his own man that makes the contact. And now there they're going to try to call that he was interfered with the chance to catch the football. I don't see that. Was Bailey confused? He was a Cardinal last year. <laughs> Saw these red jerseys coming his way. This should be the final play of the first quarter. On play action, Miller is taken down by number 96, Clyde Simmons. Last night, Clyde Simmons had nothing but bad intentions in mind when he talked to him at dinner. That's the end of the first quarter from Anaheim with the score. The Rams seven, the Cardinals nothing. Clyde Simmons, 96. He's working on Clarence Jones right here to tackle. Watch what he does with his hands as he starts to go upfield. Any good defensive lineman, they got to work their hands. He's going to get underneath. And then Clarence yeah. is going to lose leverage on the outside. Now he's got a straight line to Miller. Do not underestimate the ability to have a great defensive end hey, on that weak side. And that's the problem with this 46 defense. He's working 
on the weak side, the open side. So Clarence Jones, the tackle, he's got no help. You saw he was one-on-one -on -one out there. He might as well be out playing corner or something. He's got to take that man all by himself. Two-time all-time sack leader for the Eagles. A guy that Buddy had to get here. Simmons had 19 sacks two years ago, led the NFL. Miller's pass is complete to Richard Buchanan. First down for the Rams, Buchanan, the all-time leading receiver at Northwestern University. He keeps the football, his first reception of the season. Well, they Doesn't said, want to give it up. They said in training camp, he never lets go of the ball once he has it. Great hands. One thing Chuck likes a lot about this kid, he catches everything. You know, then that was a, an instance of what happens in the 46. When you're blitzing everybody, you got to get bad matchups sometimes. Terry Hogue was trying to cover this man on that play. That's not going to work. And look at the discrepancy in possession. That's what the Cardinals want to do. They want to keep the 46 arrested so they can play in positions like this right now. The Cardinals ran 22 plays from scrimmage in the first quarter. The Rams just eight. Kenny, it's hard to run the football against the 46. Think of the 46 as a four-down lineman defense with six men on the line of scrimmage at all times. There's just too many bodies there. And with only eight offensive plays by the Rams in the first quarter, the uh, Cardinals' defense has spent much of today on the sidelines. Yeah, and see, they're rested. Look what they just did. And because that defense is so pressure-oriented, attack-oriented, those guys got to be rested at all times. That's really going to come back and be in their favor when they play in Phoenix, and it's hot. Sean Landetta, both punts over 55 yards so far today. Robinson at the 15. Only six yards on the return after Landetta's 53-yard punt. Early second quarter from the Big A. Welcome back to Anaheim Stadium. Kenny Albert along with Ron Pitts on Fox. The LA Rams leading the Arizona Cardinals by the score of 7-0 on a 74-yard fumble return by Todd White. First and 10 for the Cardinals from the 21. This is centers. Shane Conlon in on the stop. There is Chris Oldham, Cardinals cornerback, who went in for x-rays on his leg. Chris has returned to the Cardinals sideline. Nothing worse than being on the sidelines, knowing you're not 100% healthy to play and now everything that's going through his mind now is what is it? Is it going to be okay? You know, is this going to hurt my career down the line? Four yards there. for Larry Centers. Second and six. Play action. Here's Burline. The play for the first down at the 33-yard line, Randall Hill. Eight yards on the play. If you're Steve Berline, this is what you're looking at. Watch the way he has to step up and throw in the midst of all the madness that's coming around him. The line does a good job that time of blocking, but he's got hands in his face. He's got bodies in his face. And the thing that all offensive coaches try to do is not let him see color right away up the middle. That's the thing that distracts him the most. Berline, 7 of 13, 60 yards. The handoff goes to centers. Met head-on by Marquez Pope. And once again, we talk about the speed of Marquez Pope. He's a little undersized. The media guide says 195. Now, he's about a buck 80, I would say. But the fact that he can read, run past fast, and get up and make a hit, that saves time right there. That's, that's a key factor in this defense, especially if you are a little nicked up up front. And he can also cover the pass. Second down and six. Cardinals on their own 39-yard line. The pitch back to Ronald Moore. Flag on the play. 
Moore wrestled to the ground by Todd White. Larry Sinner that time with a good cut block on Stokes. And they're going to get the face mask on Light. Five-yard face mask penalty and number 41 on the defense. We'll assess it from the end of the run. First down. So you get a guy like Ronald Moore that's so quick to the outside and he's such a good runner. When you grab him, you just want to grab anything you can. And once again, these aren't what they call flagrant face mask penalties. They're just face mask period. If you touch it, they're going to call it. That's the third penalty that led directly to an Arizona first down. Ronald Moore around the left side once again across midfield. <laughs> Big Ernest Dye at 6 4 3 15, excuse me, 6 6 3 25 coming around the corner that time. Getting a nice block on Roman Pfeiffer. I mean, this is the kind of guy you got to have beef up front. You got to have people and get watch the block here. Now, Roman Pfeiffer goes about 6 2 230. He's given up some poundage there, I would say. Look at the speed and quickness of Pfeiffer. He gets right back into tackle. Pfeiffer led all Rams in tackles a year ago. Second down at six. Berline gets it off for the first down to Ricky Prohl, but Berline took a hard hit from Pfeiffer just after he got the pass away. 12 yards on the reception by Ricky Prohl. Pfeiffer came on a blitz that time from the outside, and he put a hit on Berline. Defensive coaches will tell you, you got to get to the quarterback. You may not get the sack, but you got to make him feel it. Get to him and get to him early. That's one thing Al Davis always said. And it's true. Cardinals on the move. First down on the Rams, 36. Five and a half substitution here. Now got new linebackers in. Excuse me, Ron. Five and a half minutes into the second quarter. Larry Centers gains a couple. Centers led the Cardinals in rushing and receiving during the preseason. In fact, last year, he was the Cardinals' leading receiver out of the backfield. Well, when I went to Arizona to visit Dave Atkins, offensive coordinator for the Cardinals, he told me that Centers was the guy that is really valuable to him because not only can he run effectively like Ronald Moore can run, but they're going to use him in the backfield to come out and catch passes. And they're going to line him up in the slot, use him as a receiver. Second down, Derek Ware with his third reception of the game, matching his 1993 season total. And the Cardinals with another first down on the nine-yard completion from Burline to Ware. Cardinals working underneath right now. They know that they saw the Rams made some substitutions in their linebacking situation. Tom Homeco, 57, he's in there. Chris Martin, 53, he's in there. So I think they're going to attack the middle of the field and try to take advantage of that inexperience, or I shouldn't say inexperienced, guys that haven't started or taken as many reps. First down and 10 from the Rams, 24. Gary Clark, wide right, Ricky Prohl, wide to the left. Here's Bullock, scrambling away from a number of Rams, and he throws it away. Berline heard footsteps, knew he was in trouble, and threw the ball out of the end zone. As you know, lots to be said about throwing that ball away and not throwing it for an interception. Here are the Rams just using a, a four-man push, getting a little bit of a, a push there. You see, Berline is so agile, and he's so aware of everything around him and when to get out of the pocket. I'm really impressed with him. He's a smart guy. Can make him some real good decisions. Doesn't doesn't make a dumb throw very often. How about that? The Rams. That is not ball. good. Less than five minutes. Burline looking in zone, and it's broken up by White. The pass intended for Ricky Prohl and Todd White, who has scored 
the only touchdown of the game saves a Cardinals TD. Burline threw the ball a little late that time. He had the man. If he just gets rid of it a little early, see, the ball should have been gone. It should be there now. You can see the receiver. He's got to wait and hold up. Ricky Paul's got to wait for the ball. Light should have intercepted it. Todd Light runs a 4-3. You can't give him time to make up on a ball. You got to put it there, put it there now. Cardinals 0 for 4. Uh, third downs, third and 10. Berline lost it up. Flag on the play. Clark almost had it. Flag thrown in the vicinity of Gary Clark. Yet another Los Holy Angeles Rams penalty. 31 on the defense. The five-yard penalty, first down. Steve Israel, third year out of Pitt, called for the hole. Ron, this is the fourth first down the Cardinals have gained via a Rams penalty. See, this is the thing that Knox told me in the camp. Too many penalties. We can't play like this in the regular season because it's going to come to a point where teams are going to take advantage of it and they're going to beat you as a result of your penalties. First and 10 from the 19. Ronald Moore on the center step. Shane Conlon, the first man in, as Moore loses a yard. It's funny, Shane Conlon has had every injury you can imagine. When we played together in Buffalo, he had a knee, he had a shoulder, an ankle. I mean, he looks like the 10 man when he walks out of practice. But when the ball is snapped, he gets it on and he gets through there and he makes plays. That time he ran inside out and just ran Ronald Moore down. And Ronald Moore can run. Remember he was talking to us about his off-season workout program Ronald Moore was. He uses that parachute to run. It increases the strength in his hamstrings and his, his stride downhill. Well, Steve Berline said the difference between Moore and Centers, Moore is a great runner. Centers is a great athlete. Second down and 11. Berline's pass completes the ball. Hit immediately by Steve Israel. The Rams defense is pretty much a percentage defense. What I mean by that is that they're not going to let people get big plays on him. They're going to play in some zones that are fairly conservative, and they're going to make it go down the field and beat him that time. I mean, that's about a three-yard reception. It was two yards from the line of scrimmage. That is not what, what offensive coordinators want as a successful pass play. This is the 14th play of the drive for the Cardinals. Third and nine. Arizona in shotgun formation. Berline being chased. Berline being a, a quarterback that works so well on the move, it makes sense to roll him out. But the Rams are, are so disciplined in their zones and rolling as a quarterback roll. That's one thing they did in training camp a lot was roll out and practice mirroring their zones with quarterback movement. Greg Davis, 37-yard field goal attempt. He was 13 of 13 last year inside 40 yards. This one is good. Greg Davis connects from 37, putting the Cardinals on the scoreboard for the first time today. It's the Rams 7, the Cardinals 3. Greg Davis, who just connected from 37 yards out, will kick off for the Cardinals from that new one-inch tee last year. Kickers were allowed to use tees of up to three inches, but this season, a one-inch tee from the 30-yard line. So kickoffs will be shorter. In fact, during the preseason, 93% of kickoffs in the NFL were returned last year. Regular season, only 68%. This taken at the seven-yard line. Seventeen-yard return by David Lang. 
The Rams will take over first down when we return. One of the new rules in the NFL this year is the coach to quarterback communication device. The device sits in the quarterback's helmet just above the ear pad. The quarterback can receive information from the sidelines, but he cannot transmit. Here's what it sounds like. Pepperoni? I didn't want pepperoni. I wanted sausage. Well, Ron, we'll get you anything you want up here in the booth. Anything you want will be delivered. Anchovies? <laughs> well, the coach, the quarterback, helmet radio. Chris Miller from the Rams 25. Going to pass on first down. Intended for Jerome Bettis. Getting back to that helmet radio. It is controlled up in the press box by an NFL employee. And it is turned off with 15 seconds remaining on the play clock or when the ball is snapped. So a member of the coaching staff can communicate with the quarterback up until 15 seconds remaining on the play clock or the snap. And the helmet radios cost $20,000 each. Every team had the option of purchasing between two and four helmet radios. Second down, Bettis hit after a one-yard gain. So it has been a slow start for Jerome Bettis. Six carries, only three yards, and a fumble. If you watch the Cardinals' defense now, they're showing Chris Miller one look up front. And that look they're showing him is the, the basic 46 look with six men on the line. At the last second, they're dropping back and showing him what they call a basic 43 stack, four down linemen, and all the linebackers are stacked behind as we look at Clyde Simmons there. That gives them freedom to run and find the football with the speed they have. That's deadly for an offense. Third down and nine. Rams going with four wide receivers. Miller with the quick pass. It's knocked away. Intended for Buchanan. Terry Hose was there, the weak safety. And the Rams will be forced to punt for the fourth time this afternoon. Cardinals brought the corner blitz that time, and Miller did what he was supposed to do. He sighted Justin to go to the throw. And people say that's a bad matchup with Hogue and maybe a wideout, but when there's so much pressure in your face, it doesn't matter. That's what Buddy does. He plays the percentages to see if you can get the ball off in time. Sean Landetta averaging 53 yards per punt. Robinson taken down at the 35 yard line 42 yard putt and a three yard return Kenny Albert and Ron Pitts back in Anaheim thought I saw Keanu Reeves uh, going up the 405 <laughs> earlier today in that bus yes yeah, so did I he was in traffic, though. That's the way it is out here in L.A. Buddy Ryan. Arrived early enough to miss the traffic. First down from the 36. Burline's pass is complete. Randall Hill, gain of eight. His third reception of this first half. Yeah, you're, at, you're at 4.30 now in the second, second quarter, and... The Cardinals need to try to get some points here on that drive. You don't want to be in a position where you go in behind. And here's a look at what's happened just as far as time of possession. I mean, that's incredible. And this is exactly what Buddy said he had to do to this offense when he came in here. They got to hold on to the ball, and they got to let that defense rest. Second down and three. Cardinals just short of the first down. Ronald Moore gains two yards. See, now the Rams are in their version of an eight-man front. They've brought Marquez Pope up there. He's playing as the eighth man. They're saying to the Cardinals, go ahead and try to pass it. Don't try to run it because we're going to stop the run. They need the football. Not as much as the Cardinals need to score right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third down and one. Cardinals.
signal on their own 45. Larry Sethers over the top. Does he have it? We'll have to wait and see where the ball is spotted. Sethers looked as if he was climbing steps. Not a bad decision to go where they went on the right side of that line. Tucker there. Rick Cunningham. Cunningham going 320-6-7. Talk about getting the push and moving some people. How about his green jacket when he got off the bus this morning? He won the Masters. <laughs> <laughs> well, Buddy Ryan was asked during training camp about that shirt that he wears on game days, which was given to Buddy by the owner of the Cardinals, Bill Bidwell. Buddy said, I look good in anything. Doesn't matter what I wear on the sideline. But he makes it clear who he is and that you're not him at all times. The Cardinals just short, just shy of the first down. Now you got to make a choice. You're hitting, sitting here about midfield with an inch. What are you going to do? You're going to go for it. You can see the third down conversions this quarter. Not real favorable for neither of the two teams. The Cardinals will go for it on fourth and inches. Remember the Burline sneak earlier. He does it again. Now just take a look at the bodies right now on this pile. All right, now they're going to get some scuffles going here. Well, Buddy loved this stuff during training camp. He encouraged his team to fight. Oh, yeah, he stands back when the fight breaks out. He just lets them go through it. And then when they're done, he said, all right, let's start it up again. He likes to know that, hey, if you won't fight your teammate, you probably won't fight anybody else. Not that he encourages any dirty tactics, but it's just a matter of war. And Buddy always speaks in war terms. People here in L.A. not happy with the spot. The chain gang earning overtime here today, and the Cardinals have the first down. Just under three minutes remaining. Second quarter. The Rams on the scoreboard first on the 74-yard fumble return by Todd Light. Greg Davis connected from 37 for the Cardinals. That's first down number 11, Ron, for Arizona. The Rams do not have any first downs, yet they lead 7-3. Berline on first down. The pass is incomplete, intended for the tight end, Derek Ware. Wow, that's a late flag. Very late flag. On wow, the that's late. They're going to say that Pope bumps Derek Ware on his way to the football. Kenny, it's just like Anthony Newman told us. Pass interference, number 22 on the defense. It is a spot ball, first down. Marquez Pope has a right to that football, just like a receiver has a right to the football. He's going to close out of the safety position. And he's going here, but he's got his left hand, and that's a good call. He makes his left hand. He pushes off on Ware at the last minute. Marquez will be at the top of your screen. He's going to come down inside, break on the ball, and at the last minute, he's going to extend with that left hand. That's what they call the extension. Seventh Rams penalty. First down on the 36. Here's center. Another flag on the play in the defensive backfield. face mask that time on the Rams five yard face mask on the defense we'll repeat first down well you can see not everybody down there is happy with that call you can also hear it <laughs> the Rams today no first downs eight penalties unfortunately for Chuck Notch and the Rams 
the penalty problems have continued 10 in each of the last two preseason affairs first down from the 26 Furlines pass it's Randall Hill once again his fourth reception of the game and another Arizona Cardinals first down as we hit the two-minute warning from the big A the Cardinals driving trailing the Rams 7-3 Kenny Albert, Ron Pitts, back in Anaheim. Ron, what would you call this section of fans? The section that wants to stay in town and wants to see some wins right away. Absolutely, the LA Rams, much rumored travel to Baltimore, Hartford, St. Louis. Uh, you know, no, nothing's set in stone right now. They, they got an organization called Save the Rams and they're out promoting ticket sales and, and doing all kind of PR work. But the bottom line is there are no closer to Baltimore or Hartford as they are staying here. And as many people associated with the Rams will be quick to tell you, a couple of wins early in the season. And all, that might change. And everything could change. Furlong, the pass is battled away by Anthony Newman. Rams showing a little bit of a switch that time. They bring Anthony Newman on the free safety blitz. And they haven't done that all day. In fact, they haven't done that much in the past. 26, he comes off the corner. And what Berline is trying to do is get the ball to centers. That's called a quick side adjustment. But watch the way Anthony gets up. That's a good job. He knows he's not going to get there for the sack, so he gets his hands up. Great job by Anthony Newman. Newman in his seventh year out of Oregon. Second down and ten. Furline, quick pass, knocked away by White. Almost intercepted, intended for Ricky Froll. Todd Lyon has been in the middle of the action all day long. The uh, Rams record, 74-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown and a couple of near interceptions. Coming up on the Dockers halftime, James and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from the first week of the 1994 NFL season. That's coming up next on the Dockers halftime. Rams knew the Cardinals like to work the wide side of the field, and if you look, that's where Burline's gone most of the time to the wide side of the football field. Third down and ten. Burline out of the pocket. The Rams defense continues to apply all kinds of pressure to Cardinals quarterback Steve Furline and now Greg Davis comes out to attempt a field goal. We talked about the wide side pressure. That time they bring Bailey the corner. Hoping to get some pressure in his face and it made him get out of the pocket. And Bailey comes back and gets the sack or the tackle. Davis hit from 37 earlier in the second quarter. This is a 34 yard attempt. Greg Davis, two of two. The Cardinals pull within one. It's the Rams seven and the Cardinals six. So Greg Davis, who last year kicked the three longest field goals in Cardinals history, 53, 54, and 55 yards, pulls the Cardinals within one. Important thing there, Kenny, is that they went down, they got some points. They didn't do it the, the pretty way and, and, and all that, but they got the points so they don't have to go in this halftime down. And really, the Rams should be thankful because if they can go into halftime here up at, at, any, at any rate, you know, with the way the thing's been going as far as possession and, and how they played and so on and so forth, Todd Light, if he doesn't get that one big play, and when you look at what the Rams have done on offense so far today, when they have had the football, 13 plays. Jerome Bettis carried six times. Chris Miller was sacked once, and he attempted six passes, one of six. Right, right. The question there is, where is Bettis? And then the next question is, well, maybe it's not all Bettis. Let's give some credit to Buddy's defense. 
10 play drive for the Cardinals. Leading to the field goal, Davis kicks off to the end zone, a rare kickoff, which reaches the end zone. David Lang take it down inside the 10. Jameer Miller, the first round draft pick out of UCLA, returning home. 11 yard return by Lang. Jameer, just 20 years of age, left the Bruins, your alma mater, two years early. And that is the first big play of Jameer Miller's NFL career. Oh, yeah, like you said, the Buckus finalist. The thing, the reason he's on a kickoff team, you'd wonder why a guy 6'5, 255 is running down on kickoffs. Folks, Jameer Miller runs a 4'7. That's incredible for a linebacker. He knocks over Buchanan, who's a receiver who shouldn't be blocking him anyway, and then he makes the tackle. Boy, I tell you what. You don't like to see your, your big gun sit on the bench and not play, but he's going to play. Those are the kind of plays you want him to make on special teams. And we did hear a roar from the crowd when Miller made the tackle. Many of his college friends. Hey, those Bruins are okay. Nothing wrong with them. <laughs> Too many here in the booth. <laughs> Chuck Knox, 22nd season as an NFL head coach. This the third year of his second stint with the Rams. L.A. with 90 yards to go, only 94 seconds in which to do it. First down from their own 10. Jesse Hester in motion. Jerome Bettis through the middle. Games four. And the, the Boo Birds are going to come out a little bit now because the Rams line up in a basic formation a pro set one tight end two wides one and two backs you know people want to see the four wide outs they want to see him try to get the ball downtown but you got to understand look at the field position you're inside your 15 yard line you can't go airing it out now you don't want to give the cardinals more points going into the halftime that just leads to more momentum under one minute remaining second and six once again games two more clock continues to run well that's the advantage of having 29 Lorenzo Lynch and there's Eric Hill he is the singletary now quote unquote of buddy's 46 defense and it's interesting they were telling us how if he doesn't have a complete grasp on the game plan knows what's going on then they can't move ahead They've only got about 60% of the 46 defense in right now. 60%. That, that's that's pretty sparse coming in to this game of an opening game. Eric Hill, not only the defensive signal caller, but the defensive captain. And you talk about the, the Simmons and the Joiners and the Marshals coming in, but the Cardinals already had a couple of terrific players on defense. Eric Swan, Eric Hill, and the other guys supplement what the Swan and Hill have been doing for the last couple of years in Arizona. And you see right now, Buddy was, was kind of giving Hill a little bit of advice and telling him what to do. Ronnie Jones, the defensive coordinator there. Ronnie Jones called himself the best teacher in the NFL, and his colleagues are now calling him Socrates. <laughs> well, when you line up the 46 and make it work, you should be called that. See, there's that shift again. Third down and three. Some movement on the line. This time it's on the Cardinals. Offside. Number 98 on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. And that is the Rams' first first down. You hear the sarcastic roar from the crowd. See, Miller, watch his head bob there. That's what you call voice inflection. And when you get used to going off a of rhythm all the time, you got to give, they call that giving him a little sugar as far as the quarterback's concerned. First down from the 22. Guess who? 
Jerome Bettis has the first down. 13 yards. Clock continues to run. And now the Rams call timeout. The Cardinals are going to put three guys up front, and they're all tough. Swan is the guy in the middle that makes it all happen. They get him sealed off. And then they do a good job on the backside block right there. Lester came up and got Lorenzo Lynch. Jerome Bettis does not need a whole lot, as big as he is. Here's a guy, 5'11", two, and that's, he's more like 250, 255. That weight changes every week. He is a load. And last year in that New Orleans game, we saw just how fast he is. He's another guy that does the off-season workout stuff. He goes to Denver, Colorado. Works out there in a the high altitude because he has an asthma. He says, when I come back down here, it's nothing. It's like stealing. If I'm going to pump it 30 times a game, I got to be in shape. I got to be ready to go. Jerome Bettis today, eight carries, 23 yards. His goal for the season is 2,000 yards, something that has been accomplished only twice by Eric Dickerson and O.J. Simpson. But on the other hand, Bettis says, if I only gain 1,000 yards and we win, uh, that is the most important that's thing. Big, right. Here's Miller. It's complete. And another Rams first down. Their second consecutive first down on the completion to the former Cardinal, Johnny Bailey, and a gain of 13. This is 95, Jameer Miller. Now, he's got a mismatch. He's covering a wideout. Watch what the wideout does to him as he starts to work into the open field. Now, he's going to come back, and he realizes he's got this man here, but he shouldn't do this. He should stay back. That's the disadvantage of having a linebacker on a wideout. He doesn't have the awareness of being in the slot area with all that air around him. He doesn't know how to stay back and be disciplined. And the fact that Jameer hasn't been in all camp, he doesn't know all the defense. He'll hear about that play Monday morning, believe me. Buddy will be all over him. And there is Jameer Miller, the first round draft pick by the Cardinals. Five seconds to go. In this first half, Rams lead 7-6. will air it out. Drop in the end zone. Aeneas Williams plays it in the end zone for the Cardinals, and that will do it for the first half of play from Anaheim. The Rams lead the Cardinals 7-6. Stay tuned for the Dockers halftime as Fox NFL Sunday continues after this from your local Fox station. Welcome back to Anaheim, California. Kenny Albert along with Ron Pitts on Fox. The Rams leading the Cardinals by the score of 7-6 as we get set for the start of the third quarter. This first half highlight is brought to you by Proof Positive by MCI. You know, marquee guys always find a way to make a play for you. Right here, that's Jimmy Jones from Dallas, a free agent. Watch what he does to earn his die. He's going to drive him so far back in the backfield, it's going to throw off the timing for Larry Sinner's running the football. So we can start it up here. He's got to stop and get away from Die, And now he's not aware of where he's supposed to go, and he's probably not aware of the football as he should. And now here comes the strip by Kelly. And that's just a matter of Todd Light being in the right place at the right time. Thank goodness for the Rams. That's their only big play this game. 74 so far. yards on the fumble return for the touchdown. Off the kickoff, Patrick Robinson forced out at the 25-yard line. 21-yard return by Robinson. So the Cardinals will go to the offense. Arizona controlled the ball for 22 minutes, 20 seconds. As we take a look at the first half statistics, the numbers that stand out, not only the time of possession, but the total yardage and the first down. Well, this was Buddy's goal when he came in, and he's doing it here in the opener. This is not only bad for the Rams' offense because they can't score. You know, it's real good for the defense, for the Cardinals. Those guys are fresh. 
They're running around there, and that's where you want your defense to be if they're an attack-style defense. Steve Furline, 12 of 24, 102 yards in the opening half. First and 10 on the 25. Larry Centers met immediately by Robert Young, the left defensive end. Robert Young coming off knee surgery last year. A lot of people weren't sure if he could be 100%. Once the season started, he limped around a lot in training camp. But I tell you what, you're talking about a big, big man. It's 6'6", 273. Uh, Mississippi State Shane Conlon. A little bug there. Don't worry about that look. He, he, that's the way he walked on the field his rookie year in <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> there you go. Play action on second down. Berline. Intercepted. Marquez Folks. Marquez Pope in his third year out of Fresno State with the first Rams interception today. And Burline took a big hit after he got rid of the ball. Burline has got pro open. He didn't get enough on the ball. Look at the elevation that Pope gets. He's playing the safety position. He goes up and he makes a great grab. Watch the hit Burline takes, though. He just got it away. And I'm not sure if he stayed down because he knew it was an interception or if he was really hurt. First and 10 on the 45. Miller, play action pass, going deep. Anderson defended on the play by James Williams, and there is a flag. If that's a flag, then Buddy's going to tell James Williams, don't worry about it because that is aggressive play at the corner. You can't make your corners be tentative back there. You got Flipper Anderson. He can run a 4-2, 4-3 easy. The left hand of James Williams got him right on the back of the shoulder pad. And that's what they got to call. You can see his left hand. He's got him. He's holding. You can see Flipper's neck goes back just a little bit. Even so, great concentration by Flipper Anderson. He still had the ball for a split second. A 39-yard gain on the penalty. Rams with their best field position of the day. First and 10 on the cargo 16. Buchanan in motion. Jerome Bettis. Three-yard gain for the second year running back out of Notre Dame. Just a look at what happens on this new kickoff rule. Look at the start line. 30, 25, average starting position on the own 18. Wayne Severe, the Rams special teams coach, came out of Washington, worked with Chip Lowe Miller, had the great years back there. He says, now we don't want to kick off past the 35. I used to get really mad when it come past the 30. Now we just got to say 35. You're conceding too much on the kickoff. The Rams started this drive on their own 45. Second and seven. Play action once again. Miller has to scramble down to the five-yard line of the Cardinals. Miller lowered his shoulder after a gain of eight. Pat, it's always something to bring the Rams back down, this time holding. Penalty number eight. Holding number 79 on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's the right guard, Leo Goez. Which brings the ball back to the 23. Go is 79 here. Because of the new rule, the offensive linemen are allowed to do a little bit more, including back up. But here, he's going to work right here in the guard position. And granted, he's working on some pretty tough guys up there. It's easy to get your hands on people. Second down and 17. Another quick pass. It's complete. Jesse Hester headed towards the end zone. James Williams saves the touchdown. And Hester a bit shaken up.
21 yards on the pass play to the former L.A. Raider and Atlanta Falcon, Jesse Hester. Played with Chris Miller in Atlanta. Hester catches the ball underneath Roddy, tries to get airborne and dive into the end zone. But that's the price you pay when you get your feet off the ground in this business. So Hester heads to the sidelines. Rams will have the ball on the two when we come back. Kenny Albert, Ron Pitts back in Anaheim, California with the Rams leading the Cardinals 7-6. Arizona, Ron, has controlled time of possession, but the Rams are just two yards away from going up 14-6. You know, right now, in Jesse Hester, 63 consecutive catches in you know, each a game. That's, that's what you want to do for your wideout. Can't be any better than that. Miller just two for eight in the first half, coming on here in this third quarter. Jerome Bettis down to the one. And the official on the near side says he is in. It's a touchdown for Jerome Bettis. It looked as if Bettis was stopped short. And the one official on the near side, signal touchdown. In this situation, the low man is going to win the battle. Watch how low the Rams get. And Bettis just is able to get the ball over the plane. The plane, the ball has to break the plane of the goal. And all that chalk and stuff, it's hard to say where the plane really is. But official standing at the end line there, he makes the call. Touchdown. Luis Zendejas for the extra point. And the Rams have taken a 14-6 lead. Jerome Bettis, seven touchdowns as a rookie, scores here in the opener from one yard out. Patrick Robinson takes the Tony Zendejas kickoff, and a flag on the play as Robinson was tackled at the 18. Boy, the Rams special teams are jacked up right now. Yeah, you come in here and there's been all this talk about Buddy and the 46 and everything, and now that they're ahead, I think they really sense that they can play with this team and be successful today. Holding number 95 on the return team. That's a 10-yard penalty, first down. He had to look down to see where it occurred. <laughs> and that's the rookie, Jameer Miller. Committing the holding penalty. And this is a look at the touchdown. The ball does not have to cross the line. It can. In order for it to be a touchdown, it has to break the plane. But the question on this play is, was his knee down back here? And the officials did not immediately signal the TD. The Cardinals backed up to their 10 after the holding penalty on Miller. First down and 10. Centers blown back behind Burline. Burline's pass short intended for Gary Clark. Yeah, Steve misfired on that one a little bit. I'm starting to wonder. Now, he's taken a couple hits. He took a few early, and he took one last series. Has this got an effect on him? Look how much... The Cardinals throw also to the right hand, the right side of the field, or the field side. The protection is good. Tucker up front and Cunningham. As you can see, he just doesn't get enough on it. And Gary Clark is going to catch that ball if it's badly thrown. Erline started 9 of 15, just 3 of 11 since. He'll pass on second down, short once again. They tried the same route to Clark, and Burline has gone short two passes in a row. The Rams, I believe, are concerned about their deep threat, and so they're going to give up the underneath pass. And once again, it doesn't look like Burline has got everything on that ball he needs to get on at that time. That, that catch should have been made, without a doubt. That's the receiver's fault there. Arizona 0 for 7. Third down attempts. For a line, it's in and out of the hands of Ricky Throw. Also.
so there, the cornerback Robert Bailey. Berline took a shot once again, and the Cardinals forced a punt. Berline has got the time. The offensive line is doing their job, but it's the hits he's taken after the throw. Lyman Henderson, the corner, comes in and puts a lick on him. The Rams are showing the Cardinals a lot of safety and corner blitzes, something I don't think they've seen a lot. Beagles punt, played by Bailey at the 42. He's across midfield, and the Rams will start out in Cardinals territory after the 48-yard punt and a 14-yard return. Kenny Albert, Ron Pitts back in Anaheim on Fox. This game summary brought to you by Budweiser. Rams just 52 yards in the first half, the last drive. They went 55, although 39 via penalty. Right. And the both Rams touchdowns have been scored off Cardinals turnovers. The first one directly on the fumble by Bettis, scooped up by Light, and the time of possession. Yet, where it counts on the scoreboard, it's the Rams 14 and the Cardinals 6. Yeah, you know, last night in the Fox Roundtable special, Jimmy Johnson said that the Cardinals would struggle early. Pull him, pull him, pull him. And here today, they have dominated time of possession, but well by eight. From the 46, Jerome Bettis. Gains a couple. This is the most important drive right now, excuse me, Kenny, for the Rams because they're up by eight, and they're in a position now that if they can score here, especially a touchdown, the decision comes, do you go for two? Because by going for two now, I think you will pretty much put the Cardinals out of reach in terms of getting field goals to catch up. They'll have to score from there on. And the Cardinals have not yet reached the end zone to break Davis' field goal. Second down and seven. Play action pass, Miller. Miller being chased and he's taken down. Michael Bankston. A loss of five yards on the play. This is the guy that Seth Joyner told us last night is the best kept secret in the NFL. 6'3", 280, third year man out of Sam Houston State. They know that Miller is such a... Bankston here, he's working on the left side, number 63. He sees Miller scramble, so he's just going to go after him in hot pursuit. They know Miller likes to run around and dance, and it's good to have some guy back there sometimes that's not pushing up the field all the way. Rams third down and 12 after the sack by Bankston. Miller gets it off in a hurry. It's complete. Jesse Hester. Gate of four, so it will be a fourth and eight as Sean Landetta trots out. Now, see, that changes things a lot. I, like I said before, I really believe the Rams could have got a score there, preferably a touchdown. It would have changed the complexion of the game. Now uh, they're going to have to come back on defense and they're going to have to stop the Cardinals. The Cardinals, in turn, are going to come back on offense and they're going to have to show if they can get the ball on the other side of the 50 now. Well, the 46 is a big play defense, and Bankston came up with the big play there. Very short punt by Landetta. Bounces out of bounds at the 19. 22-yard punt by Sean Landetta. The Cardinals will take over when we return to the Big A. The last time Steve Verline played here at Anaheim Stadium, 12 years ago, an All-American Verline at Servite High School here in Anaheim, connecting on a long touchdown pass of over 60 yards to Brian Salerno. Servite High School won the playoff game over Long Beach Poly 31-7. Uh, I think he was facing a 46 defense there. <laughs> looks, looks like that's what Long Beach Poly was in. Well, he should be used to it there. Yeah. <laughs> First down from the 19. Furlong just three of his last 13. Make it four of 14 as Ricky Furl comes up with the catch. Ricky 
Ricky Pro, most productive receiver last year, 60 receptions plus. Done that two years in a row. He's had a TD in five consecutive games. That ties Jackie Smith's record, a great tight end for the Cardinals. Ricky Pro, a guy the Cardinals know they can count on for 60 plus. Not a real fast guy, but you know, when I played against him, he'd always get open. Very cagey receiver. Second and four, Bullock finds Wendell Hill for the first down. He takes the hard hit from Marquez Pope. Randall Hill, 12 yard reception, his fifth catch of the game. Five receptions, 46 yards. Well, that play took a toll on a lot of guys. Randall Hill, they had to pull him off the ground. Marquez Pope, he's having leg problems right now. Looks like cramps, and they're a lot more painful than what's actually going on inside your body. Burline got off the ground again. McMahon, in watching McMahon this morning, he came out about 8.30. How do you get to the stadium that early? <laughs> you mean you never uh, no, no. came to the stadium the night before and Last bus in, baby. There? Overnight? Last bus in. <laughs> Next week, Fox NFL Sunday coverage begins with the pregame show featuring Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, Jimmy Johnson, and James Brown at 9 a.m. Pacific. The action continues as Joe Montana goes up against his former teammates for the first time. It's the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area right here on Fox Sports. Well, that San Francisco-Kansas City game next week, one of the marquee games in the NFL. When you think of the 94 schedule, you have David Shula against Don Shula. You have Buddy Ryan against the Philadelphia Eagles. And you have Joe Montana against the 49ers. Doesn't get much better than Doesn't that. Doesn't get any better than that. Well, I don't care what they say about Joe. Joe still throws the football. He sees everything, got great vision. And I think the two quarterbacks in the field today have great vision. We've seen them both get out of the pocket, scramble. Randall Hill's been going inside a lot today. I don't know how he feels about all that. But you, the thing about this play is both guys, they cramp simultaneously. Hill, he cramps here. Now watch Pope. He's going to start to cramp. <laughs> and folks, we're laughing because it's only a temporary situation, but when you cramp, you're helpless. You can't do anything except lay there and wait for him to get you off the field. And Marquez Pope is walking towards the Rams bench. Randall Hill with the first down, first and ten on the Cardinals, 37. The pitch back, Ronald Moore. Moore hit at the 39, Steve Israel. Israel who uh, led all players in tackles during the first half, comes up with another one on Ronald Moore. Israel, that time the corner coming up. Corners don't like to take too many of those shots. You do them every now and then to make it look good for the film on, on Monday, but they, they always say picks, interceptions get you in the Pro Bowls. Tackles put you on IR. I remembered that too. <laughs> How many career interceptions did you have? Uh, we'll talk about that later. Four line on second down. It's complete. Ricky Froll. Or Larry Centers, excuse me. Centers out of the backfield. There's the value of Larry Centers. Ronald Moore, the guy running the football so well for him last year, had over 1,000 yards. But if you talk to anybody in this organization, it's Centers who can do the real damage. And for a guy who's a fullback working on Chris Martin, the, the linebacker, look at the job he does of getting his feet in bounds. They don't practice that. That's receiver stuff. They go and practice that all the time. He's over there hitting blocking dummies and stuff. Go, go. Centers led the Cardinals in receiving last year. 66 receptions, first and 10. The handoff goes to Moore. He finds a hole across the 35, a first down, and Moore! Moore up to the 24. <laughs> and Moore... Well, see, that's what happens when you're part of the all-Madden team. So you come out the next year and you start to run even harder. 22 yards on the run by Ronald Moore. 
This is just straight man-to-man -man blocking up front and more fine scenes. You don't have to blow people off the ball when you got a running back like this. And watch the way he spins and runs through tackle. He always keeps his feet moving. I think that's that parachute workout doing that right there. Well, Burline uh, using a number of teammates on this drive as centers burst through the middle. We've seen centers run. We've seen centers catch. We've seen Moore run. We've seen Clark. We've seen Hill. Burline really spreading it around. And... The Cardinals moving now inside the Rams 20. George Dyer, the Rams defensive coordinator, told me during the week that they are just massive up front as far as the Cardinals are concerned. He was concerned as to whether or not, if they just start coming off the ball, could they stay tight in there? I mean, up until this time, it doesn't seem like the Cardinals have really tried to force the run issue. But now they're forcing. Now they got two tight ends in the game. They're really getting serious about it. Second and four. Centers in motion. Spins up for the 15. Excuse me, I said two tight ends. That was actually Larry Sinners. He looked like a tight end in the position he was at. But they're serious about blocking. When they put Sinners up close to the tight end and start to move him around, they're trying to move people up front. This is not a finesse defense. Notice they've changed a lot of defensive people for the Rams, and it's really going to show and tell getting into this later part of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. They've had injuries in the front court. Now can they stand up when it becomes smash mouth football time? Third down and one. Larry Sanders has the first down. He's to the Rams 13. We talk about this Cardinal offense last year. Even though they were a team that went seven and nine, they were eighth ranked in the NFL in total offense. They were 11th ranked in the run, but you know, in this league, anybody can get going on you at any time. You can't keep that in your head when you go into a football game. Run in the NFC, only Dallas, San Francisco, and Green Bay scored more points than the Cardinals last year. In fact, despite their 7-9 record, the Cards outscored their opponents by 57 points. Right. makes the pass, hands it off to centers. He's up to the five-yard line of the Rams before he was finally pulled down by Anthony Newman. Gain of nine. Boy, that's a pretty play this time. Burline's going to step back. He's going to come with the pump fake. This is basically a version of the Statue of Liberty. You see Shane Collin on the blitz that time. He doesn't even see it until it's too late. And when you've got your safety men coming up making tackles, that's not a good sign. Because the more tackles they got to make, the less aware they are of the pass. Centers with 25 yards, more 45. Rams late getting on the field here. Stokes coming in at the last minute. This is the 10th play of the drive for the Arizona Cardinals. Burline over for a quick chat with the coaching staff. Now, if you're going to make a run on this line of scrimmage, it's not a bad idea to run it to the left side. You got Luis Sharp, who's been there for 13 years. I played with Luis at UCLA. Then you got Ernest Dye at 6'6", 325, the left guard. Hey, why not run that way? You realize you're admitting your age by you know, telling everybody that you played with Luis Sharp. I meant to do that. He's now a 13-year veteran. I meant to do that. Thank you. And a timeout is called by the Cardinals. Steve Berline calls timeout with two and a half to go. In this third quarter, it's the Rams 14 and the Cardinals 6. Welcome back to Fox NFL Sunday with Ron Pitts. This is Kenny Albert. Rams over the Cardinals 14-6. You know, Dave Atkins, the offensive coordinator for the Cardinals, he told me that he felt like 37 centers was kind of their buyers, a guy who could do everything. You know, Keith Byers, the guy they had in Philadelphia, he could do everything, could run, could catch the ball out of backfield, just an all-around versatile guy. First and goal from the five. Burline's pass is, let's see, complete. Ricky Kroll. Cardinals first down. 
Well, how about the catch that time by Pro? Not only does he catch the ball on the warning track part of this field, because it's still set up for baseball, obviously, but he catches it with one hand, and it's thrown well behind him. That's why this guy is such an important part of their offense. He's the money guy, I think. Have they played much baseball here recently? Uh, I don't think so. Not, not too much. From the three, play action, Burline looking end zone. That is the touchdown, Cardinals. There Line he is. Centers on the three-yard pass play from Burline. And the Cardinals cut the Rams' lead to 14-12. Don't be surprised by Larry Sinners as a fullback being able to catch the football. He's going to start out here, coming out of the backfield. He'll be number 37. If we can stop it right here, look what happens to the Rams defenders. That's Shane Collin and Bailey. They're completely running into each other, but Collin's trying to get out to cover Sinners. That's just good execution. That is a good job from the staff of looking to see where they can fit a pass in. The Cardinals will go for two. A run or a pass into the end zone, and the Cardinals will tie the game. Burline will line up in the quarterback position. Brian Hennessy in the backfield for the first time, along with Moore. The pass intended for the tight end, Terry Samuels, and the Cardinals unsuccessful on the try for two. Have you noticed how often as Chuck Knox there just wipes his brow a little bit, have you noticed how often Burnline rolls out to his right and how often they throw to the right? The Rams said coming in that this was a right side, wide side throwing team, and they've proven that so far. Leave it to Buddy Ryan to go for two, the first opportunity he got. You know, it's interesting, too. You look down the field, going to that side is where the infield dirt or the warning track from the baseball dirt is. You might think that coaches would run to the opposite side to get away from some of that dirt and some of that gravel because you don't want anybody slipping and, and unsure footing in this position. Nothing like that. Uh, those hats Buddy wears. We're going to see the play here again. That's Brian Hennessy outside. He's trying to get into the corner, but they got a strong safety covering him, and that makes that's Toby Wright. And then they, in the last second, Burline tries to go in the back of the end zone, and it's just ran out of time. But that's just called matching up good. That was Hennessy the first option. Hennessy was the first option, but the key there for the Rams is they used Toby Wright, a strong safety who was used to covering backs out of the backfield, and didn't try to match it up with. A linebacker. Greg Davis will kick off from the 30-yard line. We saw Steve Furline on the phone a moment ago, perhaps accepting congratulations on uh, that drive. He completed all five of his passes for 37 yards, and the touchdown pass to Larry Centers. Once again, they go into the possession game. The kickoff by Davis, played by David Lang at the five. Lang to the 30. 26 yards on the return. The stop made by Andre Waters. Fox NFL Sunday is a football pregame show like you've never seen before. Join Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, Jimmy Johnson, and James Brown for one full hour of breakthrough NFL entertainment and information. Fox NFL Sunday begins at 9 a.m. Pacific right here on Fox Sports. L.A. Rams leading by two. First and ten on the 31. No to pass on first down. He's going deep. Flipper Anderson. He's got it. At the 25 of the Cardinal. 45 yards on the pass play. Miller to Anderson. Chuck Knox told me in training camp the thing he likes most about Miller is that he's tough and he can throw the deep ball. Aeneas Williams can run. He's a 4-3 guy. This is just great concentration by Flipper Anderson. Look at that. 
That's a great picture of a great catch, Kenny, without a doubt. And he catches it like we talked about. Look at the dust from that infield. He's just going to blow him away. Nothing fancy here. He's going to get behind Aeneas Williams, and the ball's up. Perfect throw. Aeneas Williams gets a hand on the ball, but Flipper just concentrates so well. I mean, here's a guy that they're talking about having a great year for him. Last couple years, he didn't have the kind of year he wanted, whether it was because of their quarterback situation or whatever. But now, oh, that, that, may, be, that may be one of the best catches I've ever seen. Completely shielded, couldn't see the ball for a split second. Chris Miller is hoping Flipper Anderson becomes his new Michael Haynes. Exactly. He needs a deep threat. And he was happy about that yesterday. He said, I finally got a guy now that I can go deep with all the time. And he puts that fear into the defense. That's another good Bruin, right? <laughs> Too many Bruins out here. Well, went head-to-head -head with Flipper many a day. Many practice sessions. Flipper Anderson and Mike Sherrard, the wide receiver combination right, at right. UCLA when, when you were there. First down. On the Cardinals, 25. Miller will pass on first down again. Anderson, and it's almost picked off. James Williams in the end zone. As the Cardinals were double teaming Anderson, Williams almost picked off Miller. Now, you got to ask yourself, at what point do they talk about offensive interference? Williams here, watch the adjustment he makes by turning around to catch the football. And there's no contact by anybody there. Williams has just got to come down with the ball. And you see he has it until he rolls over. Miller on second down. It is batted away by Clyde Simmons. Clyde Simmons played basketball with Michael Jordan growing up in Wilmington, North Carolina, and he acted like a center swatting away the shot by Miller. And hey, what did he say? Seth told us that it's something else to have this guy playing near you. It takes pressure off you. You can't double team any one guy on this defense. Look at the people you have out there. Wilbur Marshall, Seth Joyner, Clyde Simmons, Eric Swan, who is just the beast who's every, who everybody's worried about in the center. Who do you double team? Who do you try to take the pressure off? Third down and ten. Buchanan in motion. Miller is taken down by Simmons. That is not the kind of hit Chuck Knox wants to see Miller take. He tried to go with the pump fake. That didn't work, and by the time he brought the ball down, the heat came from the backside, and it was not nice. Watch the pump fake here. He's going to do just to get a defender up in the air and give himself time, but he never notices that Clyde Simmons is on full pursuit from the backside. You're talking about hit, getting hit by a guy 6'6", 280. He's bringing it from the other side of the field. It's going to take more than water to clear his head. Tony Zendejas from 44 yards out. It is wide right. Zendejas, fifth all-time in field goal percentage, wide right on his first attempt this afternoon. And that is the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Rams 14, the Cardinals 12. Our coverage will continue after this from your local Fox station. We are at the Big A Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California. Just moments ago, Tony Zendejas of the Rams was unsuccessful on a 43. There you see the ball is spotted on the 33-yard line. Now, that's the question. The new rule this year, if you're attempting a field goal outside the 20 and you miss, the ball is given to the other team at the spot you kicked it at. Now they place the ball just above the 31. So the officials have misspotted this ball by two yards, and now Furline is set for a loss of seven. Right now, for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. That's good.
Thanks, JB. Cowboys leading the Steelers by the score of 19-9 in Pittsburgh. Now, Kenny, how much will that field goal and that the misalignment of the ball, misspotting of the ball, come into play for the cut for the Cardinals here? Well, Burline sacked for a loss of six. Second and 16. Burline takes it himself, and he is hit at the 28. Burline run into by Todd White. You know, with all these assistant coaches and the public relations people upstairs, statisticians. I can't believe it was missed. Missed spot of the ball. I by can't two yards. believe it was missed. Right. Once, once again, that's one of the new rules. Outside the 20, you miss. The ball's turned over at the spot of the kick, not the line of scrimmage. Burline's pass incomplete, intended for Randall Hill. Flag on the play in the backfield. Burline took a hard hit. Are they going to have a late hit? The penalty is on the Rams. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 58 on the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty, first down. Roman Pfeiffer called for the late hit. Pfeiffer here, number 58. You're allowed a part of the new rule one step after the ball is released from the quarterback's hand. A headbutt. But he, it looked more Pfeiffer. like a headbutt that was in question than the step, because he took the step and you saw the way he tried to jump. This is the sixth first down by way of a penalty committed by the Rams. On first down, Ronald Ford to the outside. Into Rams territory. Four games about nine before he is finally hit by Toby Wright. Funny, one of the strengths of the Ram defense is their ability to run laterally so fast, especially in a 34 defense, which is something new for them this year, or new for them this game anyways. That means three down linemen and four linebackers. But Kenny, like we said earlier, they've got basically a second unit of linebackers as we, as we look at George Dyer there, offensive coordinator for the Rams. Well, Ford did gain the first down. Ten-yard pickup by Moore. Here's centers up to the 40. Boy, Anthony Newman coming up and laying wood. He knows he can't let a guy like centers get any steps on him in that secondary. Anthony Newman, a collegiate teammate of Rams quarterback Chris Miller. Watch the hit here as Newman comes up at the last second. Whew. Boy, it's like friendly fire. You can get hit and hurt more by your own guys than you can the opposing team. Second and five on the Rams 40. Los Angeles leads Arizona 14-12. Ronald Ford ahead for a gain of four. Cardinals have said, okay, we're down by two. We're going to settle into this running attack. We're going to let guys like Ronald Moore, who have been so successful for us in the past, we're going to let him do what he does best, and that's run the football. And that's Buddy's style. I don't think Buddy is a downfield bomb-throwing type of guy. He wants to get in the trenches and get nasty with it. Increasing for the Rams, yes, the time of possession, but, boy, Cardinals jumped out on him. And I think that would be the difference in this game if it does go in the favor of the Cardinals. Almost a three to one margin. Burline takes it himself, and it looks like he has the first down for the Cardinals. Steve Burline with 300 friends and family in attendance. A native of Anaheim, this is his first professional game at Anaheim Stadium. See Jimmy Jones getting up very slow, the crowd starting to wind down just a bit. Those are the Burline backers. 300 of them, 300 tickets. 300. Could you find 300 friends and family? No, I couldn't do that. Could you find 200? No. Two or three. That's two or three. Three, three! Burline off the play fake. Lieutenant for Ricky Kroll. So the Cardinals 
go for the big play on first down. Buddy Ryan led the Philadelphia Eagles to a three playoff berths in five seasons. Defensive coordinator in Chicago, defensive line coach in Minnesota, defensive assistant with the Jets. He's been to three Super Bowls, and he has brought a winning attitude to Arizona. Owns a sports bar restaurant called Buddy's in downtown Phoenix. So Buddy's is packed today watching the Cardinals and the Rams. Here's Berlin on second down, goes across the field, and it's stepped off. The play is whistled dead. Virginia, Keith Lyle. Keith Lyle has a beat on this ball the whole way. It's a floater. Great one-handed catch. The discrepancy there, and it's not a discrepancy. He stepped out actually twice. And now it's time to get on the horse. To show you the speed of Larry Sinners, he's going to come over here, put a hit on him, and the cheerleaders, they got to learn to get out of the way. Keith Lyle in his first NFL game. It'll be Rams ball when we return to the big game. Keith Lyle, the rookie out of the University of Virginia, whose father, Gary, played for the Chicago Bears. Lyle on the interception, first and 10 Rams on the 30, with 10.40 remaining. In this fourth quarter, third Arizona Cardinals turnover. Jerome Bettis. Bettis gains five as the Rams keep it on the ground. You know, let's go back to this 46 defense again. In addition to, you can call it a 46 because of a four down lineman in the game and there's six men on the line most of the time, but the name 46 comes from a free safety named Doug Plank. Who Chicago Bear fans will definitely remember as a strong safety who would knock your teeth out. And they just call it a 46 because he was a strong safety that would come up there and represent the eighth man on the line of scrimmage, just like Lorenzo Lynch, 29, represents right now. Lynch also a former Chicago Bear. Second down and five. What great audio. You can hear the sounds of the line of scrimmage. Incredible. That's exactly what it's like down there on the field, to be able to hear that and to get the intensity of the hits. This is the 46 here. You're going to see eight men on the line of scrimmage right down here, okay? The eighth guy is this man right here, the strong safety. This creates a problem for the quarterback now because he's got eight men and he's only got six to pick it up, seven to pick it up if he keeps everybody in. from the Rams 37. Miller is taken down. Jameer Miller. It's Miller time as Jameer Miller sacks Chris Miller. Yeah, Miller, you know, Ted Cottrell, the defensive line coach, he said he's seen a lot of good rushing linebackers, and he said this guy may be the best of them all. He just comes off the corner free. There's nothing hard about this play for Jameer. In all fairness to Chris Miller, they just can't pick it up. But that goes back to what we're saying about the defense. With eight men on the line, and the offense has seven, if they keep everybody in, including the tight end and both backs, they can't pick up the blitzes. John Landetta punts it away. Patrick Robinson. <laughs> 50-yard punt. Three-yard return. Kenny Albert, Ron Fitch back in Anaheim. This the National Football League's 75th season. Kickoff 94 around the NFL. In a couple of weeks, all the NFL teams will wear throwback jerseys. Some of the bunting around 
at our home stadium. Oh, that bunting is very important. If you don't have that bunting, it's just, you know, you don't have the right spirit and attitude that goes along with football. You've got to have the bunting. Well, we walked in and we immediately noticed all the bunting around the stadium. Playoff type atmosphere. <laughs> First and ten from the 23. Four lines pass is complete. Gary Clark up at the 42. 19 yard reception. You know, for a quarterback against a zone defense, what you're looking for, it's like playing with a computer. You're looking for windows so you can fit in applications. Tom Kelly, 52, the linebacker, he steps out of the window just enough so he can fit that ball right over the top of him. Berline doesn't throw that ball at that split second. It's going to be tipped or intercepted. And that's Kelly down there cramping. So while the trainers tend to, and Joe Kelly will step out with the Rams leading by two. First and ten for the Cardinals from their own 42. Berline finds Hill, but it is an incomplete pass. Randall Hill at midfield, but the ball hit the ground, so it will be second down and ten. Well, Sean Gilbert's a guy down there for the Rams defensive tackle been to the Pro Bowl last year they expect him to get a lot of heat on people and if you look at what the Cardinals are doing they're double teaming him teaming him and he was saying last night how that's such a nice thing to have Jimmy Jones around for is because he can get off the double team and he's always the guy who's running free when they're double teaming somebody else well line back on second down He's going Got deep for Ricky Prohl, and it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Ricky Prohl. I don't know how many times ever as careers we in the careers we have as broadcasters that we'll see Ricky Prohl drop a football. This man does not drop footballs. 60 receptions plus two years in a row. He takes his eye off of the ball. It's as simple as that. Third down and 10. Under eight minutes to go. In and out of the hands of Larry Central. Big time, big time drop for Ricky. Like you said, something you're not gonna see a lot. That time, Berline not able to hook up with centers. And, man, if you go home, the Cardinals lose this game. That's something Ricky's going to just think about time after time. You already replay the game in your head when it's over. You can't get away from that. But when you have a mistake, make a bad play, then you really have trouble not thinking about it. The Jeff Beagles punt played by Johnny Bailey at the 13. Bailey crushed at the 27-yard line. So the Rams will take over on their own 27. There is Ricky Prohl, who had that tremendous opportunity just moments ago. Tell them to stop it. You know, Ricky Prohl is such a sure-handed receiver, and I think when you get sure-handed, you start sometimes to, to take it for granted. Here, it looks like he just takes his eye off the ball. The split second, it comes down over his head, and that's all you need to drop a football. Ricky Prohl wearing the NFL 75th anniversary hat. Absolutely. Uh, he knows about bunting. He certainly does. First and 10 from the 26. And he lost it. Anderson had it up at the 47. Lost control. So it is an incomplete pass, which will bring up second down and 10. Aeneas Williams here, just because a catch is made doesn't mean you can't keep fighting to get the ball out. That ball went from being a reception to an interception to an incomplete pass. With so few number of plays run by the Rams, Miller has not been able to get into a groove. He's 5 of 14 in the air. On 
second down, Jerome Bettis. Now you got to ask yourself, how patient can Chuck Knotts be with the running game? Yeah, this is your big horse right here. He can get the job done for you. He's proven that. But time is running out. And you haven't run the football effectively during the whole game. So what's your next move? You've got to believe he's going to get anxious and, and, and throw one downtown. Flipper's already caught a big one. You got to look for him to go to him again soon here. That pass earlier to Flipper Anderson, 44 yards. Jesse Hester caught a 22-yard pass for Miller. Third down and nine. <laughs> Miller lobs it up there, and it's caught by Johnny Bailey. Bailey in there on third down, and he makes the catch against his former teammates. That's the first successful third down play today by the Rams. This is a guy that Chuck Knox said was just as valuable as Jerome Bettis in the backfield for him. He catches the ball well out of the backfield. He does everything. We talked in the top of the show about spreading out this defense, getting bad matchups. Bailey, he went off to the left here. He's going to come right up the sidelines. And look at the throw by Chris Miller. But look at the matchup. Actually, that's a pretty good matchup, I'd say, if you're going to put Jameer Miller on Bailey. The Rams cut Cleveland Gary. They kept Johnny Bailey. This is Bettis. That was the one big hit they had it to get in. They, the running was okay, and it was getting them in the yards, but it wasn't as consistent as they needed to be. So they needed that big pass play. Now they'll settle down into the run a little bit, see how they do. Then they'll come back up firing again. Clock continues to run. Five and a half to go. How about that discrepancy? The Cardinals have run 74 plays from scrimmage. The Rams just 34, yet... Los Angeles leads 14-12, and they have the football. Uh, the Cardinals 43. Second down and eight. Miller falls down, lost the football. It's recovered by Jerome Bettis. Miller's going to back off the center here just a bit. And he just loses his footing coming back. And the worst part about this play for the Rams is that ball's laying on the ground in the fourth quarter. And you're behind with four minutes left on the clock. Sometimes Chuck Knox just shakes his head and wonders why. Jerome Bettis fumbled on the first play from scrimmage today. But there he is able to recover the fumble by his quarterback, Chris Miller. Third and 13. for Anderson and it is intercepted James Williams Williams on the intercept Buddy Ryan says James Williams is a big play man and he comes up with the interception with just 419 remaining and his team trailing by two points James Williams he's a first rounder originally out of Buffalo got in a trade here this is what you call hip pocket position. Now, that is offensive interference. Flipper Anderson grabs his face mask, pulls him back behind. Good concentration on the football. The reason James was able to get in that position, not only because of his speed, but because there's so much heat on Miller. It's not that this is a real hard throw to make to Flipper Anderson because they proved they can do it. But when you got to throw it quick and you got to throw it a second before you're ready to throw it, that's what makes it difficult, and that is exactly what Buddy Banks on, is making the quarterback throw that football a lot quicker than he wants to. Not necessarily taking anything away, but make him throw it faster than he wants to throw it. Second Rams turnover, first down Cardinals. Berline gets it away. Joe Kelly gets a hand in there on the pass intended for Larry Centers. Kelly shaking up. On the last Arizona possession, back in there. Uh, see, Berline's got to be careful down here now. He's in his red zone. That's a zone inside your own 20. And you're ahead. The clock's running. Why make throws like that? Joe Kelly, a little bit more awareness of where the ball was. He might have been able to make a play. And I know Buddy Ryan isn't happy with that. Kelly cramping up again. A little bit warm here. 87 degrees at kickoff, second down and 10. Burline 
taken down at the five. Robert Young in there, Jimmy Jones as well, loss of nine. Jimmy Jones, the free agent out of Dallas, got Super Bowl experience, done to take off the pressure from, Gail, from Gilbert, Sean Gilbert. He'll get inside, he'll fight, he'll fight, but the longer Burline holds the ball, now he's supposed to have a hurt wrist, right? <laughs> I don't think so. That was Friday. Yeah, yeah, that was Friday. Like Sean said, yeah, today I'm 60% Friday, I'll be 100. Third and 21 from the five. The handoff on the drop play goes to Moore. Does not get, does not gain much up to the nine. Gain of four yards. And the Cardinals will punt from their own end zone, trailing by two with 3.15 and counting remaining in the fourth quarter. Jeff Fiegels on the dirt, on the warning track, the baseball warning track. Johnny Bailey awaiting the punt at midfield. Bailey lost control at the 45. The ball is loose. It's scooped up by the Rams. Robert Bailey after the muff by Johnny Bailey. Number 28, Robert Bailey, very alert. Never underestimate the ability to catch a punt. If you don't watch it all the way into your hands, now that ball just took a bad spin on him. There's not a lot of wind here in Anaheim, but depending on how the punt is made, the ball can drift on you. And I gotta believe it drifted on him because Bailey's a very solid punt catcher. Next week on Fox NFL Sunday, most of you will see the Rams against the Atlanta Falcons or Joe Montana and the Kansas City Chiefs against the 49ers. Rams first and 10 from the 44. Bennett's to midfield. Gain of eight yards by Jerome Bettis. You'll notice when Bettis gets going, the crowd also gets going. And I think when he hears the crowd gets going, then he gets going even more. Timeout called by the Arizona Cardinals. Clock down to 2 minutes 34 seconds. The Cardinals trailing by 2. Remember they missed the 2 point conversion. Buddy Ryan went for 2. Of course the extra point kick uh, would have only pulled the Cardinals within 1. 14-13. But uh, had the Cardinals been successful on the attempted pass from Burline to Samuels this game would be tied at 14. You know, and Chuck was so worried about his offensive line this offseason just in talking to him. And yet you come out here today, and with the exception, I mean, let's let's look at who these people are playing against. There's Erkenbeck, the offensive line coach there, giving instructions. Look at the people they're playing against. Look at the talent the Cardinals have. I think they've done a pretty solid job of keeping the blitz off of them. And they're doing a lot of different things up there. They're giving Miller a lot of looks. And yet, the Rams have been able to hit some big plays downfield. Each team with only one timeout remaining. Second down and three. Bennett's the only Ram to carry the ball this afternoon. And he has done so 18 times. 18 carries, 49 yards. Clock continues to run. I think they're going to let it go down to the two-minute... Rams lead the Cardinals by the score of 14-12 as we reach the two-minute warning on opening day of the 1994 NFL season. Chris Miller and the Rams leading the Cardinals by two with just two minutes to go. Welcome back to Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California. Kenny Albert along with Ron Pitts on Fox as the L.A. Rams in Chris Miller's Ram debut lead the Arizona Cardinals. 
opening game of Buddy Ball. It's the Rams 14, the Cardinals 12. Todd Light opened the score in 74-yard fumble return in the first quarter. Jerome Bennis a one-yard run. Larry centers the lone Cardinals touchdown on a three-yard pass from Steve Furlong. Second and two with two minutes remaining. Bennis has the first down. Cardinals with just one timeout remaining. Clock kicks away to a minute 45. They went right on the left side that time over Loniker, 64, and Clarence Jones, who stepped in for his first start in the regular season. You got two guys over there that got a lot of weight that can push some people. They've done a good job all day long. Now it's time for the Cardinals to rip the football. That's all they can do. First down on the 44. Miller Smart, he'll take up all the time. I see there, that's a situation where whatever they had planned to run, he felt would have been sure disaster. They had to burn a timeout. And Chuck is hot about that. He's saying run some time off the clock. Chick Harris, offensive coordinator, standing next to Chuck Knox, trying to tell him to just calm down. <laughs> Next weekend on Fox NFL Sunday, the Rams visit Atlanta. Chris Miller against his former teammates, the Falcons, and Joe Montana against his former mates, the San Francisco 49ers. It's old home week as Miller meets the Falcons. Montana faces the 49ers. You saw what Chuck Knox did on the sidelines there. He's upset because Miller the clock's running. Instead of letting the clock run down, he calls a timeout. That's the thing the Rams don't want to do right now is stop the clock. As you can see, and Chick Harris, offensive coordinator, is just saying, okay, okay, we're fine, we're fine. Let's just get the win and get out of here. A minute 16 to go. First and 10 on the 44. Cardinals have one timeout left. Keep it on the ground with Bettis. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. Around the Arizona Cardinals have called their last time out with one minute, 10 seconds to go. The Rams leading by two with the ball, second and 11 on the 45. You look at this game, and it's kind of strange in a way because the Cardinals have come out textbook and held the football and used possession and the amount of time to keep the defense off the field and keep these guys rested, but they couldn't really put the ball in the end zone in the red area. They weren't productive in scoring. The teams talk a lot about how good we got to be in, in rushing yardage and passing and this and that. But you know, the game comes down to this. If you can't score, you can't win. That's the bottom line. Cardinals dominated time of possession. Rams got things going a bit here in the second half. Jerome Bettis. And then we have to reflect on the play, the, the, the fumble recovery by Todd Light. How opportune right there, it bounces in his hands. He scampers for a touchdown. Things like that, you have to shake your head if you're the Cardinals and wonder. The last opening day victory by the Rams back in 1989 in Atlanta against a quarterback named Chris Miller. There is Todd Light, set the tone early with a Rams record 74-yard fumble return for a touchdown. 30 seconds to go. It is all over. The clock winds down, and the Los Angeles Rams have defeated Buddy Ryan and the Arizona Cardinals by the score of 14-12. The Rams win their home opener here in Anaheim. The Cardinals will return home, prepare for the New York Giants next Sunday with a record of 0-1.
the Rams 14, the Cardinals 12. We'll be back in a moment. Kenny Albert, Ron Pitts back in Anaheim. Cardinals almost a two to one margin. Time of possession and number of plays, but they are on the losing end of a 14-12 score. You know, Cardinals had the defense, but you also got to be able to score with the football and the Rams. They needed this victory so much with all the talk about the moving. This could be a springboard. Well, next Sunday, the NFL on Fox continues with regional coverage. Some of you will see these same Rams against the Falcons, while others will witness the 49ers facing Joe Montana and the Kansas City Chiefs. The day will begin with Fox NFL Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Check your local listings for the game in your area. For Ron Pitts, this is Kenny Albert saying so long from Anaheim Stadium. Final score once again, the Rams 14, the Cardinals 12. You've been watching Fox Sports coverage of the NFL.